I was reading this book called A Billion Wicked Thoughts that was written by a bunch of engineers at Google and they were looking at billions of search uh, billions of Google searches and you know there's a no shortage of pornography on the internet and, it, and there's much less by proportion than there was when the internet was first invented and it's so interesting because it actually turned out that one of the things that drove the development of the internet and the technology was the proclivity of young men to search out sexually provocative images that was what was at the forefront of the development of the nets extraordinarily interesting The Google engineers looked at pornographic search processes and then segregated male searches from female searches and what they found was that the males searched out images no one considers that particularly interesting but the females searched out literary representations of pornography it was written and so I can give you an example of that you know about Harlequin romances okay well they're mass market romances and of a very stereotypical type the original ones were pretty harmless in terms of no violence and no real sexual contact but that was 40 years ago and they've differentiated tremendously and now there's hardcore Harlequin romances and particularly garish covers and then there's the old you know more tame basic sexless and aggressionless romances where everything is implied and not explicit but the explicit ones exist so they did a plot analysis of the typical pornographic female fantasy and it's so comical because engineers did this and social scientists would never do this because they'd be probably too concerned about the ethics of it or some damn thing but engineers you know they'll just plow ahead with no concern whatsoever for such things and they actually discover things that way and so they discovered the basic plot of the female pornographic literary product so basically what happened was that innocent well-meaning and attractive young woman encounters a male who's a bit of a monster and the monster is five types of classic male monster for all you males who want to know this is what you can become vampire werewolf billionaire pirate and surgeon now you're actually blushing you know you're actually blushing about that that's very very funny so <laughs> sorry to point it out but it's so comical you know I know, I know, it's so funny, I, I, I was reading this, I was reading this, it was just cracking me up, I thought, oh my god, really? Pirate? Vampire? Oh, that explains it, what about all these damn vampire shows? But I mean, there's predatory dominance that's implicit in that. With the billionaire, it's more abstract, but clearly that's an indication of very high success in the male dominance hierarchy. But there's this desire for aggression, but the basic plot is that the woman encounters this mysterious and aggressive male and tames him. That's the female hero myth, as far as I can tell. It's Beauty and the Beast, because there's no fun in taming someone who's already tame. And what makes you think you really want someone who's tame anyways? There's no interest in that. Plus, when chaos manifests itself, what makes you think that someone tame is going to be good for anything? And it's a real question, and so that aggression is absolutely vital. It's absolutely necessary. But, because it's inc incredibly dangerous, which of course it is, it has to be civilized. And so what happens is that the archetypal female in these pornographic romances seduces and tames the aggressive male and that's her encounter with chaos of course females they're more complicated and that's exactly how it is and it's no wonder because their lives are more complicated